Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to KubeCon, where my co-host John Furrier and I are broadcasting live, along with Lisa Martin, from KubeCon Detroit, Michigan. We are joined this afternoon by two very interesting gentlemen who also happen to be legends on the Cube. John, how long have you known the next few? They've, they've made the their mark on the Cube, but Jerry Chen from Greylock was one of our most attended Cube guests. He's a VC partner at Greylock and an investor. And this company that just launched their new cloud observability platform should be a great segment. Well, I'm excited. I, are, are you excited? Should I sh string this out just a little bit longer? No, I won't. I, I won't do that to you. Please welcome Martin and Jeff from Chronosphere. Martin, Jeff, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. I noticed right away that you have raised a mammoth Series C, yeah. 200 million, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. That is correct. Where's the company at? Yeah, so we raised that Series C a year ago. In fact, we were just talking about it a, a year ago at KubeCon. Uh, since then, at the time, we were about 80 employees or so. Since then, we've tripled the headcount. So we're over 250 Casual employees. Casual triple. Casual triple of the headcount. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, uh, it was the support of business, which has also tripled in the last year. So we're very lucky from that perspective uh, as well. Uh, and a couple of other things we're pretty proud of last year. We've had 100% customer retention, which is always a great thing to have as a SaaS uh, platform there. Is that there. even a real metric if you've had 100%? I'm kidding. It's a good metric to, to, to <laughs> put out there if you had 100%, I would say, <laughs> for sure. It's an A for sure. And, uh, exactly. Love and, uh, anyone else who's had 100% customer retention here at this week. Uh, and 90% of our customers are using more of the service and, and you know, uh, therefore paying more for the service as well. So those are great signs for us and I think it shows that we're clearly doing something right on the product side, I would say. Uh, last, and last time you are on theCUBE, we were talking about it's about the right data, not so much a lot of data, if I remember yeah. correctly. And yeah, 100%. That was a unique approach. It's yeah. a data world on relative to observability, and you guys just launched a new release of your platform, cloud native platform. What's new in the platform? Can you share an update on what you guys released? Yeah, we, we did, and, and you, you bring up a great point. You know, like it's not just in observability, but overall data is exploding. All right, so three things there. It's like a, can your platform even handle the explosion of data? Uh, can it control it over time and make sure that as your business grows, the data doesn't continue to explo exploit at the same time? And then for the end users, can they make sense of all of this data? Because what's the point of having it if the end users can't make sense of it? So actually, our product announcement this time is a pretty big refresh of, of a lot of features in our, in our platform, and it actually tackles all three of these uh, particular components. And I'll let Jeff, our head of product, uh, Jeff, you, you, you sure. run product, yeah. you get the keys to the kingdom. I do. Product roadmap, people are saying, hey, add this, take this out. You're under a lot of pressure. What makes the platform a great observability product? So the uh, keystone of what we do that's different is helping you control the data, right? As we're talking about, there's an infinite amount of data. These systems are getting more and more and more complicated. A lot of what we do is help you understand the utility of the telemetry so that you can optimize for keeping and storing and paying for the data that's actually helpful as opposed to the stuff that isn't. What's the benefit now with observability? With all the noise out in the marketplace, there's been a shift over the past couple of years. Cloud native at scale, you're seeing a lot more automation. Almost a setup to support the growth for more application development. We had the Docker CEO on earlier today, he said yep. there are more applications being deployed in the past year mm -hmm. than in the history of open source. So more and more apps are being deployed. More data is being generated. What's the key to observability right now that's going to separate the winners from the losers? Yeah, I think you know, not only are there more applications being deployed, but there are smaller and smaller applications being deployed, mostly on containers these days more than anything else, hence this conference gets larger and larger every year, right? So yeah. you know, I think the key is, A, can your system handle this data explosion is, is the first thing. Not only can it handle the data explosion, but you know, APM solutions have been around for a very long time, and those were really introspecting into an application, whereas these days, what's more important is, well, how is your application interfacing with every other application in your distributed architecture there, right? So the use case is slightly different there. And then to what Jeff was saying is, like, once the data is there, not only making use of what is actually useful to you, but then having the end user make sense of it, because we, we, we always think about the technology changes, we forget that the end users are different now. We used to have IT operations team operating everything, the developers would write the application, just throw it over the wall. These days, the developers have to actually operate this thing in production, so the end users of these systems are very different as well, and you can imagine these are folks, your average developer has maybe not operated things for many years in production before, so they need to, they need to pick up a new skill set, they need to use new tooling in order to, to do that, so yeah, it's... it's and you got good. the developer persona, 
you got a developer that's building products for builders, and yep. developers that are building products to be consumed. So they're not, they're not really infrastructure builders. They're just app developers. Exactly, exactly. That's right, and that's what a lot of the new functionality that we're introducing here at the show is all about, is helping developers who build software by day and are on call by night actually get in context. There's so much data. Chances of when, that, when one of those pages goes off and your number comes up, that the problem happens to be in the part of the system that you know a lot about are pretty low. Chances are, you're going to get bothered about something else. So we built a feature, we call it Collections, that's about putting you in the right context and connecting you into the piece of the system where the problem is to orient you and to get you started. So instead of wading through hundreds of millions of things, you're wading through the stuff that's in the immediate neighborhood of where the problem is. Yeah, and to your point about data, you can't let it go unchecked. That's right. You got to understand it, and we were talking about containers, again with, again with Docker, you know, nuanced point, but oh, scan your container, but not everyone's scanning the containers. It's a security nightmare. Right, I mean, right. Well, I think one of the things that I, I loved in reading the notes in preparation for you coming up is you've actually created cloud native observability with the goal of eliminating engineering burnout. Mm -hmm. And what you're yeah. talking about there is actually the cognitive burden yep. of when things happen. Oh, for sure. we, we're, you know, we're not just designing for when everything goes right, you need to yep. be prepared for when everything goes wrong, and that yep. poor lonely individual in the middle of the night has It's a tough job. Has right? to navigate that. And, and observability is just one thing. You gotta remember, like security is another thing. So so many more things have been piled on top of the developer in addition to actually creating the application. Right. It is it, there is a lot, and you know, observability is one of those key things you need to do your job. So as much as as much as we can make that easier, that's a better bit like there are so many things being piled on right now. That's the holy grail so. right there, because they don't want to be doing Exactly. The work that, They're not yeah. observability experts. Um, exactly. Yeah. Automating that in. So where do you guys weigh in on the automation w wave? Everything's automation. Is yeah. that kind of a hand waving, or what's going on? What's the reality? What's actually happening? Yeah, I think automation. I think is key. You hear a lot of AI, ML ops uh, are there. I, I don't know if I really uh, believe in that or having a machine self heal itself or anything like that. But I think automation is key because there are a lot of repeatable tasks in a lot of what you're doing. So once you detect that something goes wrong, generally if you've seen it before, you know what the fix is. So I think automation plays a key role in the sense that once you detect it again, the second time, the third time, okay, I know what I did the previous time. Let, let's make sure we can do that again. So automation, I think, is key. I think it helps yeah. a lot with the burnout. I don't know if I'd go as far as to Burnout's say. Burnout's a big deal. Well, 100%. there's an example again in the, in the stuff we're releasing this week, a new feature yeah. we call Query Accelerator. Yeah. That's a form of automation. The problem is, so you got all this data, mountain of data, we put you in the right context here, so at least in the right neighborhood, but now you need to query it. You got to get the data to actually inform the specific problem you're trying to solve. Yeah. And the burden on the developer in that situation is really high. You have to know what you're looking for, and you have to know how to efficiently ask for it so you're not waiting for a long time. You know, we built a feature, you tell us what you want, we will figure out how to get it for you efficiently. That's the kind of automation that we're focused on. That's is actually a good service. How can we... Sounds blissful. How can we <laughs> accelerate and optimize what you were going to do anyway, rather than trying to read your mind or predict the future? Yes, Savannah, It's so community forward. Yeah, I, I'm, so I'm curious, you, you clearly lead with a lot of empathy, both of you, in, in putting your, well, you, probably have experience with this as well, but putting your mind, or putting yourself in the mind of the developer, are, what's that like for me from a product development standpoint? Are you doing a lot of community engagement? Are you talking to developers to try and anticipate what they're going to be needing next in terms of your offering, or how does that work for you? Oh, for sure. So, so I run product. I have a lot of product managers who work for me. Um, somebody that I used to work with, she was accusing me, but what she called she called me an anthropologist of a product <laughs> manager. I get these kind of you, the very good design school vibes from you, yeah, and both of you, which is cool. And, there's, and there's the reason why here. she said the way you do this, you you go and you live with them in order to figure out what a day in their life is really like, what the job is really like, what's easy, yeah. what's hard, and that's what we try to aim at and try to optimize for. So that's very much the way that we do all of our work. And that's yeah. really, uh, also highlights the fact that we're in a market that requires acute real-time data from yeah. the customer. Because it's, it's all new data. Well yeah, it's all changing. The yeah. tools change every day. Yeah. I mean, if we're not watching how, and. Uh, so to yeah. your point, you need it in real time as well, right? The whole point of moving to cloud native is you have a reliable product or service there, and like if you need to wait a few minutes to even know that something's wrong, like you've already lost at that point. You've already lost a ton of customers, yeah. potentially you've already lost a ton of business. You know, and to, to your point about the, the community earlier, one other thing we're trying to do is also give back to the community a little bit. So actually two days ago, we just announced the open source of a tool that we've been using in our product for a very long time, but of course our product is, is 
is a paid product, right? But actually open source, I'm part of that tool, thus that the broader community can benefit as well. And that Which tool, tool actually, is that? It, it's called Prom Lens. It's actually, uh, it, the, the Prometheus project is the open source um, metrics project that everybody uses. So this is a query builder that helps developers understand how to create queries in a much more efficient way. We've had it in our product for a long time, but we're That's like, let's fun. give that back to the community so that the broader community of developers out there can have a much easier time creating these queries as What's well. What's been the feedback? Uh, we only announced it two days ago, so I'm not, oh, yeah. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure. I imagine it's great. They're probably uh, playing with it right now. Exactly, talk. exactly, exactly. <laughs> sure. I imagine great. But, uh, yeah. You guys mentioned burnout before, and we heard this a lot. Now, you mentioned in terms of data, uh, we've been hearing and reporting about it into the security world, which is also data specific. Observability ties right into security. Yep. How does a company figure out, I mean, first of all, burnout's a big problem. It's more and more data coming. It's like, it's like it doesn't stop. Uh, and the breaches are coming too. How does a company know when they need that their observability strategy is broken? Is there sig signs of you know, burnout? Is there signs of um, breaches? I mean, what are some of the tell signs that if I'm a CISO, I go, you know what? Maybe I should check out Chronosphere. When do, uh, when do you guys match in and go, we're a perfect fit to solve that problem? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, because we're focused on the observability side, less so on the security side, some of those signals are like, how many incidents do you have? How many outages do you have? What's the occurrence of these things? And how long does it take to recover from, from, from these uh, particular incidents? How well, upset are your customers? <laughs> Which one? How upset are your yeah. customers? How upset are your right? customers? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and, and one trend we're seeing- A lot of churn happening. <laughs> exactly. And one trend we're seeing in the industry is that 68% of companies are saying that they're having more incidents over time, right? And if you have more incidents, you can imagine more engineers are being paid, are being woken up, and they're being put under more stress. And one thing you said that would be very interesting is, you know, I think generally in the observability world, you ideally actually don't want to figure out the problem when it goes wrong. Ideally what you want to do these days is figure out how do I remediate this and get the business back to a running state as quickly as I can, and then when the business isn't burning, let me go and figure out what the underlying root cause is. So the strategy there has changed as well yeah. from the APM days where like, I don't want to figure out the problem in real time, I want to make sure my business and my service is running as it should be, and then separately from that, once it yeah. is, yeah. then I want to go so and, and dig in. So understand, assume it's going to happen, but exactly. be ready to close that. Just isolate exactly. the fire. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and you know, you can imagine you know, the, the whole movement towards CICD, like generally when you don't touch a system, nothing goes wrong, you deploy a change. First thing you do is not figure out why you changed broken anything, get that back, like underplay that change, roll, yeah. roll that change back, get your business back to a state, and then take the time where you're not under pressure, you're not going to be burnt out to figure out what was it about my change that, that broke everything, so yeah. yeah. Got it. Well, it's not surprising that you've added some new exciting customers to the roster. We have, we have. You want to tell the audience who they might be? Yes, yeah, there's been a few big names in the last year we're pretty excited about. One is uh, Snapchat, I think everybody knows, knows that application, and one is uh, Robinhood. So, you know, you can imagine very large, I would say, tech forward companies that have completed their migrations to, to cloud native or are well on their way to cloud native, and, and we like helping those uh, customers for sure. Uh, we also like helping a lot of startups out there because they start off in the cloud native world. Like if you're going to build a business today, you're going to use Kubernetes from day one, right? But what I actually interestingly seeing more and more of is traditional enterprises who are just early, uh, pretty early on in their cloud native migration, they're now starting to adopt cloud native at, at scale and now they're yeah. running into the same problems as well. The so. Gartner data last year was something like 85% of companies had not made that transformation. Correct. So, and that, I mean, that's looking at larger scale companies, yeah, obviously, 100%. so your fingers yeah, yeah. right on the pulse. They haven't finished it, but a lot of them are starting, starting it. it now. So yeah. we're seeing pilot it's projects. It's about and, it yep. and yep. testing yep. And, yep. and cadence, and <laughs> I imagine it's a bit of a different pace when you're working with yes. some of yes. those transforming companies yes. versus yes. those startups that are, exactly, are exactly. just getting rolling. Exactly. And you know, you, you have a lot of legacy use cases you have to, like, if you you're a startup, you can imagine there's no baggage, there's no legacy, you're just starting brand new, right? If you're a right. large enterprise, you have to really think about, okay, well, how do I get my active business oh, yeah. mo moved over, but yeah. yeah. And how do you guys see the whole cloud, native, scale moving with the hyperscales like AWS, you got a lot of multi-cloud conferences, we call it super cloud in, in our narrative, but there's now this new set of common services <laughs> being identified. We're seeing, a, we're seeing a lot more people recognizing with Kubernetes that, yeah. hey, you know what, you could get some common services maybe across clouds. Wasabi's doing storage, we got uh, MinIO's doing some storage. Yeah. Cloudflare, I mean, starting to see a lot more non-hyperscale systems. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think that's the pattern there, and I think it, it's, especially for enterprise at the top end, right? You see, a, a, a lot of companies are trying to de-risk by saying, hey, I, I don't want to bet maybe on one cloud provider, I sort of need to hedge my bets a little bit, and 
Kubernetes is a great tool to go do that. You can imagine uh, some of these other tools you mentioned is a great way to do that. Observability is another great way to do that. All the cloud providers have their observability or monitoring tooling, but it's really optimized just for that cloud provider, just for those services there. So if you're really trying to run either your custom applications or a multi-cloud approach, you really can't use one cloud provider's solution to go solve that problem. Do you guys see yourselves as that unifying Layer? We, we, we are a little bit uh, as that layer because it's agnostic to each of the cloud providers. And the other thing is we actually like to understand where our customers run and then try to run their observability stack on a different cloud provider. Because we use the cloud ourselves, we're not running our own uh, data centers of course, but it's an interesting thing where everybody has a common dependency on the cloud provider. So when US East One of AWS, hate to call them out, but when US East One of AWS goes down, imagine half the internet goes down, right? And that's the time that you actually need observability right, and every other tool in there. So we try to find out where do you run and then we try to actually run you elsewhere, um, but yeah. I like that, and nobody wants to see the ugly bits anyway. And we exactly. all know who, when we're all using someone, when everything exactly, stops exactly, uh, exactly, as people exactly. of the internet. So I, I really, I yeah, really yeah. love that. Martin, Jeff, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank What's you for next? Us. What can, how do people find out? How do they get one of the jobs since you're 3Xing your yeah. employee growth <laughs> We are hiring here? a lot. I think the best thing is to go check out our website, chronosphere.io. Uh, you'll find out a lot about our, 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 our careers, our job openings, uh, the culture we're trying to build here. Find out a lot about the product as well. If you do have an observability problem, like, that's the best place to go to find out uh, about that as well. Thank Fantastic. You. Well, if you want to join a quarter billion, a quarter of a billion dollar rocket ship over here, and certainly a unicorn, get in touch with Martin and Jeff. John, thank you so much for joining me for this very special edition. And thank all of you for tuning in to theCUBE, live here from Motor City. My name's Savannah Peterson, and we'll see you in a little bit. People obviously know you from Shark Tank, but the Hertzbeck Group has been really laser focused on cybersecurity. So I actually helped to bring.